We live entangled in webs of endless deceit. We are being rapidly reconfigured into a kind of neo-feudal society, an oligarchic society where uh, increasingly the bottom two-thirds of Americans are hanging on by their fingertips. You have a shrinking, diminishing middle class and an elite that is just making obscene amounts of money. They're uh, funding big propaganda campaigns. Propaganda is to democracy what violence is to a dictatorship. Part of what we're seeing with the security and surveillance state is a preparation for that backlash. Uh, you should be reaching people who don't know the truth. Tell them, participate with them in finding out, finding out the truth, the learning it yourself, uh, uh, encouraging them to think it through for themselves. There you go. Um, that's what I'm trying to do right now. So, welcome to the Max Podcast. I'm Max Hertz, and thanks for joining me today. So I'd like to say uh, I've received a lot of mail from you guys. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out to write and for supporting the Max podcast. And then I know a lot of you are secret listeners too, so you won't like the Facebook page, but the actual statistics show that uh, you're listening to the show. So, you know, thank you, NSA spying or web statistics, whatever you wish. Um, as that goes... Uh, I've been getting responses from people and they are saying that the episode where I analyze marketplace is actually their favorite. I really did um, start this podcast as a means to expose um, the propaganda that is uh, presented to you in the media. Um, I'm not here to deconstruct Fox news or MSNBC. Uh, Fox News especially is so obviously uh, blatant propaganda that to me that's pretty simple. So I would suggest maybe going signing up for Russell Brand's YouTube site um, where he does a lot of that. He'll deconstruct Bill O'Reilly. And, you know, to me that's that's great and I'm glad he's doing that. But um, to be honest, I really would like to do uh, what I consider more insidious propaganda, which is... Um, when the left, quote unquote, uh, wants to propagandize people, um, because it's a lot more subtle, especially NPR, uh, American public media, these networks tend to uh, appeal, say, to centrist left Democrats a lot of times. They, you know, um, and so it's a little harder to decipher the manipulative actions that they're taking, right? So I, w I would like to start with this one concept. If we were to say that we had a spectrum of politics on the left would be zero, right? So like from zero to 10. So you have on the left, extreme radical leftists. And then at 10, you have like, you know, uh, total right wing, you know, neo-Nazi, right? So like the right would be Hitler okay like that would be 10 and then zero would be like jesus right uh i don't give a f if you're one of those sick twisted christians who thinks christ hated poor people you don't know christianity and let's just you know let's review the facts uh you know jesus said give up all wealth and possessions right um take care of the needy and the sick okay you know all these kind of things that the christian right does not acknowledge and somehow they turn Jesus into this sick, twisted Christian right person. It's just f***ed up, right? So in actuality, Jesus was like a totally socialist, leftist, liberal, right? You know, radical, radical. He went and destroyed the um, tax collectors' tables because they were in the temple. You know, I mean, these are like clearly not anywhere close to right-wing ideology, right? So if we were to have this left-right calibrating system, right, then we could say cent being centrist is five, okay? Well, that may be true, but what I would like to point out is, is that the discourse that has evolved in America and globally, and particularly from Fox News, has pushed this centrist point to a new, like, say, seven, right? So if you were a leftist, like a Democrat, maybe you were at, you know, 
three or four on the spectrum, five would be centrist, and Republicans were like six and seven. Okay, well, this right wing has so distorted the discourse, the discussions, the ideology, and, and dragged this entire unit to where now, say, centrism is like eight. You know, the extreme right wing libertarians are, you know, in, in like nine. Do you know what I mean? Some of the Republicans are so extreme, they're like, at, you know, 10, literally fascists. And then, you know, the new left, quote unquote, is at like six. Whereas in our old barometer, you see, would have been five. So they're actually pushed very far right, you know. So an example of this would be, um, there's, you can Google this and I'll give you the links. There's a lot of um, critics that say, you know, Obama is actually to the right of Ronald Reagan. Okay, so that is maybe startling to you. So you go do your research and you find out um, yourself. Hillary Clinton's announced that she's running. I can't imagine a worse Republican than Hillary. Okay. Um, pro, totally pro Wall Street, which is our biggest problem. Okay. I mean, f straight up our biggest problem. Not paying corporate taxes. Warmonger, complete warmonger. Um, again, pro Israel, you know, a huge recipient of US foreign aid. I don't know why we're giving our money to Israel. We should be giving it to our homeless people. Um, we should have universal health care. I mean, there's a myriad of things that we could be doing with this as opposed to giving it to other countries. Another thing about Clinton, NAFTA. Do I need to say more? It's horrible, right? So, you know, these guys, for all intents and purposes, are really Republicans. And again, this whole kind of discourse has been pushed so far to the right that, you know, because you're a team member, right? You're like, hey, I'm a Democrat. Actually, now what you are is this is a, a, a moderate Republican, right? So your team are really moderate Republicans. They're not progressive liberals, okay? When I grew up, NPR, National Public Radio, was referred to as National Pinko Radio. Now this is a weird thing too, because if you listen to Democracy Now!, you'll actually realize that when they call it leftist media, this is a con job, right? This is a thief having his hand in your pocket stealing your valuables, yelling thief at you, okay? It's a, it's a misdirection and a con job. There is no liberal media at all. It's not. It's a conservative to extremely conservative media that's yelling liberal to distract you from it. It is using semantics and strategies to distort the reality, and people are falling for it. So, again, when I grew up, NPR was National Pinko Radio, right? That's, that's literally what people used to call it. Now, it wasn't that it was so leftist. What's interesting is that journalism, when done correctly, will appear to be leftist because it's so easy to attack the right. Do you see what I mean? So, like, this, this kind of um, Mussolini fascism, okay, which is corporatization, right? It's pro-corporation at all costs okay is perpetuated and so if you're a journalist and say like you know i would like to break a story about some injustice you know you'd say to your editor hey i want to go and do an article on say you know uh corporations not paying their taxes right you see and then they go like people like bill o'reilly like you're a leftist liberal media and it's like no that's actually just trying to give the facts about what is for all intents and purposes exposing a fascist ideology which is the corporatization right so again the sheer fact that the corporations don't pay taxes is a very um, pro-fascist way to engage uh, governmentally with corporations you see what i mean like if i if you and i pay our taxes i sure the f would hope they would pay theirs but they don't right so that brings me to this next episode which is f***ing john oliver Okay, I, I had such high hopes for this comedian, but I have to admit, he, uh, coming from The Daily Show, uh, strikes me as exactly the problem that, that Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert expressed when they were doing their shows. And what this problem is, is that they restrict the left goalpost, right? So in the discussion, they are gatekeepers. They appear to be liberal. They're more liberal than most, right? 
That's true, we can agree on that. But their liberalism, say, keeps the left side of the discussion, right, at, say, six on our barometer chart that I explained earlier. Do you see what I mean? Instead of allowing it to go to one or zero, which would be like radical left, you know, not just liberal. Liberals are, say, you know, ideally three or four, right? So radical leftists would be zero or one. Um, these guys will never allow the discourse to go that far. So they actually work as gatekeepers. The other issue I have is that they work to placate the left. And the way they do this is by basically exposing some injustice or something that you kind of maybe know about or would be sympathetic to, okay? And then they expose that, and then what happens is, is it's over. Like, you're placated. So you're like, oh, thank God, they're sympathetic to me. I, I have a sympathizer, okay? This clown, you know, is, is supporting my belief system, okay? And you're like, yay, you know, God damn it, yes, and that's right, and uh-huh, and then you turn off the show and you do nothing. Now, I'll give last week tonight with John Oliver a little bit of kudos in the sense that he's perpetuated the illusion uh, just a little more by giving you some kind of like hashtag solution, right? So you can hashtag your way into change, you know, rarely. And, and admittedly, he has also given some, you know, addresses. So write this person, which I think is great. I do give him credit for that. But I still have problems with some of the way he presents things. I still consider him a gatekeeper. And I got to tell you, I really consider him a gatekeeper after last week's episode. So I'm going to I'm gonna use the episode that aired on Sunday, April 12th, um, because it was right before tax day. And John Oliver was uh, promoting the IRS. I shit you not. It's f***ing true. If you don't have HBO now, um, you know, borrow a password from your friends. Don't pay for it. Uh, and go listen, go watch the show. Uh, he is amusing. It's well written. They do do journalistic investigation. I give him kudos to that. But after seeing this episode on the 12th where he deals with the IRS, um, I'm, I'm utterly shocked. So, uh, Max, why are you so shocked? You might ask. Well, it's because in America, to be a one percenter, you have to make over $375,000, right? John Oliver's net worth, you can Google that, net worth of celebrities. It's a fun thing to do. Um, I like to point that out. Rush Limbaugh, $400 million. $400 million to spew racist, angry, misogynistic, opioid-laden comments on the radio. It is insane. That is an insane thing. This world is backwards. But John Oliver is worth $2 million. He's starting out, right? Um, but that's, that's a healthy sum. Now, the problem I have is if you can, again, also Google, uh, you know, one percenters and not paying taxes like Warren Buffett says his secretary pays more in taxes than he does. And he's one of the second richest men in America. So uh, the reason this is, is because at that level, you have different ways of writing things off. Uh, you can actually, you know, your uh, properties, expensive properties can be written up all these things you can you can write against whereas uh, the working man really doesn't have these options to write it off so we actually very often pay more in taxes than these wealthy people so to have a f***ing one percenter come on a f***ing show like you're paying for hbo right you pay for an hbo and then a one percenter comes on that show and tells you that the irs is good he can go f himself right think about that just that fact right there is disgusting because what he's asking you to do, you paid for his show. You're paying for his show. You pay HBO fees to watch his show, and he's telling you that the IRS is good. Now, uh, I'm going to start with some aspects to the show, and then we're going to cut in and out. Our main story tonight is the IRS. Now, I know that sounds unappealing, but I promise you, if you stay to the end of this, there'll be a very sexy reward. <laughs> now, this Wednesday is April the 15th, the day every year when Wesley Snipes pokes his little head out of his burrow, <laughs> and if he sees his own tax return, quickly dives back in. Okay, 
Um, let's just start right here. Uh, Wesley Snipes has not paid his taxes. He actually did jail time. He's back out now. Um, what's funny is, is that in this context, John Oliver is making Wesley Snipes basically like a gopher, right? So he's demeaning his character, okay? And by demeaning his character, he's actually imposing onto you, the viewer, that like if you were to stand against the IRS, you too are no greater than a mole. Like, or, you know, a groundhog. Embrace yourself for a rough tax season. Yes, the IRS warning this year will be worse than most for you. Nationwide, only 4 in 10 callers to the agency's toll-free line are getting through to a real person. Mm. The number of courtesy disconnects when an overloaded system hangs up on the customer has now reached 5 million so far this year. That's right. If the IRS's system gets overloaded, it will give you a courtesy disconnect which means hanging up on you. And you can't just put a nice word in front of an unpleasant one and change the meaning. Now, this is funny, and he is making fun of the IRS. And it's absurd that the budget has been cut for the IRS so much that it's incapable of helping uh, the U.S. taxpayer. But at the same time, what he's also doing is is expressing to you and to us to be patient with this understaffed, underfunded enterprise. Right, he's promoting your patience. <laughs> okay, think about that. Tonight, I'm going to attempt the impossible. I'm going to try and make you feel a small amount of sympathy for the IRS. Uh, why? Because for a start, it cannot be a pleasant place to work. Just listen to what extra little gifts they get alongside people's tax returns. But well, we've had everything come in from brown sugar to dust out of the vacuum cleaner to people spreading mustard. Uh, that's because people hate paying taxes on the check now that check is processed but we just wipe the mustard off and send it to the bank <laughs> this is how matter of fact he is this must happen all the time yeah some people put mustard on the check some people file their returns inside of a dead fish uh, one man covered his check in vaseline and pubic hair we just wipe it off and send it to the bank that's what we do here And it's not just furious mustard enthusiasts taking it out on the IRS. Even state governors have publicly demonized them. If the governor of your state is expressing his disconcern or dislike for the IRS, he's demonizing the IRS, then that maybe would affect you as a citizen of that state to think again about the IRS. So what do you need? John Oliver. Governor LePage didn't want to talk about the outrage he sparked when he compared the IRS to the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police. But when we pushed him for a comment, here's what he said. It was never intended to offend anyone. But you compared them to the Gestapo. (laughs) Of course they were offended. If you compare someone to the Gestapo and they don't get offended, that's a big red flag. (laughs) Um, That would be a misdirection or a logical fallacy. What John Oliver has done is redirected your attention to what the governor said, right? But what he's not addressing is this. Why is the governor calling the IRS the Gestapo? See, that is propaganda. He is manipulating you. It's a funny laugh. Sure, the governor is a buffoon because he recanted it, right? That's funny. Ha ha, let's go. You know, he is an idiot. But we've ignored the entire discussion. Which is why does the governor hate the IRS? But, but the public perception of IRS employees as Gestapo-like villains doesn't quite match up when you see what they're actually like. Because on the IRS YouTube channel, there are videos where employees talk about their jobs. And they don't seem evil so much as unbelievably boring. You see, they're really good people, right? You know, go pay your taxes. These people are boring and good, right? Have you ever been audited? You know, I I swear to God, I'm going to get audited from doing this one episode. Um, Yes, the IRS can send you a bill and say you owe them this much money. You can't contest that bill, okay? That's a fact. You just go, if you hire an accountant, what will happen is the accountant who works actually as an advisory for the IRS will tell you to just pay the bill because you want to avoid an audit, you see? And you, of course, know that there's some weird thing you deposited you know, 10 years ago, and the seven-year click glitch is not true. It's forever. Right? You miss something, and they can nail you for it. And then with penalties and all this stuff, interest, compounded interest, it can turn into a balloon. So what you're going to do is go, okay, I'll just pay it. 
But that's extortion, right? That's the same as the f***ing Sopranos showing up on your f***ing doorstep, knocking on your door and saying, Hey, hey, you know what? I want you to start paying me a hundred bucks a month, you know? And uh, that's uh, protection. And, uh, you know, we'll let you uh, continue with uh, what you're doing, right? That's complete f***ing extortion. It's no f***ing different so quit trying to make these people out to be like some bored soft nice people they will f you up a data transcriber takes the physical return and inputs it into the computer system for further processing you know you got to know about the budgetary accounting proprietary accounting you're out there meeting taxpayers at their residences at their places of business you're conducting interviews on taxpayers you're investigating their assets you're out there interviewing third parties looking for assets that possibly the taxpayer didn't disclose to you. I rest my f***ing case. <laughs> Those people aren't Nazis. Nazis are inherently interesting. Those people are the physical equivalent of Ambien. And, and look, there, there is a weird kind of heroism to doing jobs that are that boring. For f***ing real, he's calling them heroes now. He's deployed the hero card. He is f***ed. You are being manipulated. If you are angry about the amount of tax you pay, that's nothing to do with them. That's determined by a vote in Congress. Wow. Are you with me, guys? Are you seeing where this is going? I mean, did I? was this HBO special sponsored by the IRS? I mean, you couldn't have a stronger form of government propaganda and manipulating the viewer into believing that the IRS is just doing their jobs, they're a bunch of nerds, and it's for the best, right? They will show up and extract it. So it doesn't matter who passed the law. Well, it does, and we should repeal these things or change them. But the fact is, is it's the IRS that shows up and garnishes your wages, that charges you huge chunks of money. The guy admits it. They come to your house. They visit your neighbors. They inquire about your purchases. If that isn't Gestapo, I don't know what is. Much like declarations of war and how often Orrin Hatch is allowed to orgasm. Uh, <laughs> not yet, Orrin. Not yet. <laughs> Now, there you go, there you go. And look, if you think, if you think our tax code is too complicated, well, that's Congress's fault too. And you know who agrees with you? The people who work for the IRS, because even they have trouble keeping up. We looked at how many changes in the tax law had occurred in last year alone. It was something like 579 changes. 579 Nine changes? Changes in the tax law. In one year? That that's more than a change every day. Yes. How do you keep up? Uh, I don't. <laughs> and I don't know how individuals or businesses keep up. Admittedly, I'll give him kudos on this one. He's right. It is Congress that creates these laws, and even the IRS can't keep up. So we've got two problems, the IRS and our Congress. Blaming the IRS because you hate paying your taxes is a bit like slapping your checkout clerk because the price of eggs has gone up. It's not her fault. She's just trying to help you get out of the store. I'm for quitting uh, jobs that are disgusting like this, like a tax collector, right? Being a tax collector is a disgusting job, and you shouldn't do it. If nobody did it, it wouldn't happen. It's literally like if nobody showed up to fight a war, then what good is having the war? The point is, Congress has slashed the IRS's budget, but largely out of anger, which was not entirely unjustified. You may remember a few years ago there were scandals over overspending on conferences and training videos like this horrific parody of Star Trek. Uh, here he shows another stupid video um, trying to show you how nerdy the people are. But look, th that of course, that of course was nothing next to the IRS's big scandal. A report coming out this week shows IRS officials were targeting Tea Party and other conservative groups when those groups applied for tax-exempt status. What he neglects to tell you is that Bush also attacked progressive liberal organizations when he was president and had the IRS under his power. So I find that a bit odd. A portion of our workforce over 50 years of age has been growing rapidly during the last several years. We have only 650 employees out of 87,000 who are 25 or younger. It's true. Most IRS employees are over 50 and less than 1% are under 25. And that does not bode well for the IRS because a government agency should not have the same age ratio as an Eric Clapton concert. 
I'm not sure what the point of this is, what he's trying to get at. Um, it is odd, I find, that uh, they have no youth because it seems to me like nobody wants to work at the IRS, or at least I'm hoping so, right? Like, that's that would be great. We should fund them because the IRS is one of the safest investments for public money available. According to the Treasury Department, every dollar spent on tax enforcement yields back six. Six. The IRS sextuples your money. What? An amazing spin. He literally just made it look like he said, the IRS sex topples your money. Like, you, oh, it's such a great investment. For every dollar put in, you get six coming out. This is going to lead to my biggest argument about this entire thing um, coming up shortly here. The problem is our whole tax system is built upon trust. Uh, remember that statement? I'll get back to it. And if people lose faith in the IRS, the whole system by which we fund everything is in trouble. Uh, that's a total f lie. Uh, we'll get to it in a second. We collect $3 trillion a year in a voluntary compliance system. Okay, here we are. Now we're down to my point. I don't mind paying income tax, and I pay my income tax. I believe in it because I believe in a socialized kind of like, I will contribute as a citizen to America, and then those dollars will be used back. Okay, that's my civic duty as a citizen. I pay my taxes because... Um, you know, I maybe am not driving on a road in New Mexico right now, but someday I would like to, you know, and I like, and I would like my fellow, you know, New Mexicans or whoever, you know what I mean? Alaskans, Hawaiians, all these people to have, you know, good roads and a good infrastructure and all these things. So I have no problem paying taxes. What I have a problem with is corporations who don't pay their taxes. So what he just said is that three trillion dollars is collected every year which is just an amazing sum of money right and for a large portion of it it's collected at a high rate you know up to 30 plus percent for a lot of people working class working poor people paying into the system and corporations this is from a reuters article i'll post the link on the website and it says foreign profits held overseas by U.S. corporation to avoid taxes at home has nearly doubled from 2008 to 2013 to top, drum roll please, 2.1 trillion dollars. So my question is this, if we're going to work for these corporations for 40 hours a week making say one one thousandth the money that the ceo makes at that company and then he gets all these tax breaks because he's getting paid you know 10 million dollars a year okay and his company is taking all their taxes and putting them offshore i have a problem with that that is the issue so when i have some rich guy come on to a TV show that I'm actually paying to see, okay? I'm paying for HBO, and this f***ing asshole, John Oliver, who pretends to be a liberal progressive, is coming on and, and caressing me for a 15-minute segment on how great the IRS is. I tell him to go f*** himself, f*** HBO, and the corporation it is. How f***ing dare they? been listening to the max podcast you can find this episode at the you can also email me at max at 
themaxpodcast.com. Thanks so much. Copyright 2015.